topic is Plantapalooza starting seeds. So we're talking about starting seeds indoors. So I have a little quote for us to start class off. To plant a seed is to believe in tomorrow, which means we're doing something today that we have to wait for and that will pay off later. Okay, so since this month, March is uh, Women's History Month, today I have a featured female farmer. Robin Van In was one of the original founders of the community-supported agriculture movement, helping bring organic food to local communities. All told, she helped jumpstart more than 200 CSA farms across the United States. She's also traveled Russia, Canada, South America, Africa, New Zealand, Russia, and Hungary, bringing more than 1,200 CSAs online. Robin was born in 1948 and died in 1997. So a CSA, or Community Supported Agriculture, is when a farm will take customers' payment at the beginning of the season, uh, all at once, and then during the season, usually every week, the farmer will give vegetables to the customer that they already paid for at the beginning of the year. And that's useful because the farmer gets all of that money ahead of time, almost like a loan. Um, so they're able to buy these seeds and the equipment and all the things that they need for the season. And then they're giving this food out to their customers that the customers paid for at the beginning of the year. Okay, so let's jump into why do we start seeds indoors? So if we planted seeds directly outside at this time of year, would the baby plant survive? Yeah, no. So if we planted plants outside right now, it would be too cold and the plants would die outside. And then also, if we were to wait until after April 15th and even more after it warmed up a little bit, if we waited until it was warm enough, to plant things like tomato seeds outside, it would take so long for them to make food for us. So starting seeds indoors, like in a greenhouse, helps us get a head start on the season um, so that we can have those things that take really long, we can have them sooner in the summer instead of late. Okay, so let's go through the process. Step one, planting the seeds. Uh, so you have potting mix or your soil mix where you uh, fill your trays or your, uh, your containers that you're starting your seeds in. Uh, you need your seed flats or plug trays or really any type of container that's going to keep your soil really nice and moist. You need water to water your seeds with. Uh, and you need the seeds, of course, and then you place the seed into the soil and cover it lightly over the top with your soil mix and you spray it with water until it's moist and you keep it moist. Okay, so after we've planted our seeds in our soil mix, we wait for germination. So in order for seeds to germinate, they need a few things. They need water to stay nice and moist and they need to stay the right temperature. So not too warm, not too cold, just right, like Goldilocks. Uh, do you guys remember last week, we talked about what is inside a seed? So it's got a little root or radical that's inside the seed, and it's got leaves or cotyledons that are in the seed also. So um, when the seed sprouts, the little root shoots down into the soil and the leaves pop up out of the soil. And they know exactly when the conditions are right for them to do that. It's pretty cool. So this is the room where we have our seeds to sprout. Um, and as you can see, we have lots of seeds that have already sprouted. So let's try to find some plants in different stages of germination. So first, let's look for a seed that's just barely poking out of the soil. Mm -hmm. You guys see these little baby plants? I'm trying to find one that just popped out of the soil. But all of these are a little bit older than that. So 
Um, these leaves that are on these baby peppers, if you look, they're teeny tiny. These leaves were actually inside the seeds and they've just grown. So these are called the cotyledons. Those are the, the seed leaves. And then the root, of course, is gonna be down in the soil mix there. So if you look at this seed, it actually still has its little seed coat on it. So it's still pulling itself out of its little seed coat. I'm actually gonna pull the seed coat off of this seed. And when I do, you're gonna see the leaves pop out. Oh, they actually might be too tight. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it off. That's okay. So that is a seed that just popped out of the soil and in a few days, it's gonna look more like this. So we just talked about germination or when the seeds sprout. And the next step after germination is we let them grow, of course. So the tiny seedlings need a few things after they sprout to keep growing. They need lots of light, which is why they're out in the greenhouse after they sprout. Um, the sun gives them plenty of light. They need the right amount of water. Again, not too much, not too little. Airflow to keep disease away, which is why I blow a fan on them to keep mold from growing. And they need the right temperatures, not too hot, not too cold. So we've given everything what they need to grow. They're ready to be planted out. But sometimes our plants need to be potted up. For example, I'm going to pot up our peppers and our tomatoes. They're going to be in the greenhouse so long that they're going to need more space than that little cell in the tray. They're going to need a bigger pot. So um, we'll take them out of the plug, plug tray and we'll put that plug into a bigger container of soil. They need more space for their roots, so we'll pot them up. But that's only for some things like tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants, for example. Then after that, before we can bring the plants out to the field, we have to harden them off which just basically means uh, giving the plants a time period to, uh, to adjust to the harsh conditions of living outside. So that's called hardening off. The seedlings have had a really, um, you know, a really nice time in the greenhouse. They've had exactly the right temperatures. They've had the exact right amount of water. We've taken super, super good care of them, but uh, outside is a little tougher to live in than that. So what we'll do is we'll take the seedlings and we'll put them out in a shady place outside the greenhouse for a few hours each day, let the wind blow on them, let the sun shine on them. So they toughen up a little bit before we uh, take them out into the field. And we'll also go a little longer in between watering. So instead of watering every day, we might water every two days and then every three days to get the plants used to not having water whenever they need it. And then the last step is, of course, transplanting. So this is when the seedlings get taken from the greenhouse and they get planted outside. And when you transplant, if possible, you wanna choose a time when it's not too hot or sunny, because like we've said, those little seedlings are delicate, you know? Um, if it's hot and sunny outside and you plant them, it's gonna be rough on them. So it's good if it's cooler or cloudier whenever you do your transplanting. Uh, so you'll take the plants out, you'll mark the places in the ground where each seedling needs to be planted at the right spacing, the right, uh, how far apart they need to be. And you'll take the seedlings, you'll dig a small hole, you'll place the seedling in and you'll bury it up give it a big drink of water. And so now the little seedlings are outside in the ground all on their own. Let's watch a YouTube video about seed starting. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that I never liked about gardening and eating into gardening is uh, I would like to 
lot of times that can vary in seasons like we're always investing a whole bunch of money, you know, in potting soils and uh, seedlings, starting kits and, you know, peat plugs and, uh, you know, all this other stuff that we need to get, it seems like, to, uh, to get gardening started. So this year I'm going to do a series on how we're trying to focus on doing this for as little money as possible um, and even free in most cases. So um, one of the things, you know, just kind of starting off when you're getting all your seeds started, there's a lot of products out there you can buy. Um, that are fairly inexpensive, a lot of trays and seed starting kits and all that good stuff. One of the things we found that worked really well is just to save up these, um, all kinds of different containers. So throughout the year, we'll, we'll save these little plastic containers. This one had some type of salad or something like that in it. Um, all these little cake containers, any with a, a clear top on it that kind of acts like a little greenhouse. Um, and then containers, different size containers to uh, plant the seeds in. Even little ones like this that are shallow will work just fine for um, shorter rooting plants, especially if they're not going to be in there very long. So this will work for starting some smaller ones as well. We've got uh, little tomato, uh, or sorry, uh, strawberry containers here that we're using as well. Now these ones have uh, slots or, or holes in the bottom where the water can drain out. So we have those in a lid of another plastic dish here. Um, and as you can see, we've got a large cake uh, container here that we've got set up. And as you can see, it's got a lot of moisture built up in it. So we just get the, the seeds all moist and the dirt all moist in there. And then this acts like a little mini greenhouse, keeps them warm, and gets those seeds started really well. So uh, you can also use things like cake cartons. You can keep these open and maybe get a clear plastic dome or something to set over the top of it, cut the, the lid part off. Um, this will work good for really small, like lettuces or kale or spinach and any of the small, like leafy greens that don't have really extensive roots. Um, they can work in little cells like this. Same with these. There's also these uh, clear, uh, more fancy egg cartons that you can use, I guess. These have a, a, a plastic lid on the top, so these will work as well. So there's lots of different things you can use. Um, the SSL kids made these little chalkboard pots last year. Um, we've got a bunch of these. It's just made out of a sour cream container and holes drilled in the bottom of it and using the lid as like a little water catch here. These work great for starting, uh, you know, these are real deep. So you can start larger rooting things like pumpkins and tomatoes and that. Um, and then you can just cover them with the dough or something like that. So lots of different options out there to get started. Uh, we're just using an old shelf or front window if you want to go here. So we're not using any grow lights, we're not using any electricity. Uh, just trying to stay as simple as possible. This window doesn't even get that much sunlight. It probably only gets like four hours of sunlight a day. But it's uh, it's it's in a warm location and, and seed seed can sprout there just fine. So um, I'll take in and kind of show you what I'm doing for the seed starting dirt, and then we'll just show you kind of how well it's working so far. Okay, so this is the soil mixture that we're using, and uh, basically. What I do every year is um, we just, at the end of the year, when our compost is all finished up outside, um, you know, throughout the summer we're throwing stuff in and keeping it turned and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, um, by the end of the year, we've got a really nice set of fine base of, of compost. Um, so this is mostly compost. There's also, I, I grabbed a few shovelfuls of the uh, square foot garden mix that we made last year, which is uh, got some more compost and manures in it and some peat moss. Uh, some sphagnum peat, uh, which is nice to keep the soil really loose. Uh, so this is just kind of a random mixture. Uh, I think there's some worm castings in here, not very much, but very, very little bit of uh, worm castings as well. Uh, there's also a lot of larger sticks and stuff like that that I'm trying to kind of pull out as I go through the mix here. I don't want any of those larger uh, pieces of mulch that I threw in there last year and other things like the leaves. So just kind of clean that stuff up and um, keep the finest uh, material.
All right. I think we'll end the video there.